Greetings in the name of the Lord. What a wonderful day it is to be living so close to the grand time when the kingdom of God will come. While we're thinking about that, we want to think about God's people chosen. They did work with for many, many years. This is the word of the Lord concerning Israel, Zechariah said. And he puts it unusually in a way, but not really. The burden of the word of the Lord, the Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, forms the spirit of man within him and declares. Zechariah was saying, the Lord has something he wants to say to you, O people of Israel. Well, you say that was whack back many years ago. I think that those words are very pertinent to our day. There is a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord, you know, can sometimes be a severe task. I don't know if you know that or not. A difficult duty, a prophecy of a disastrous nature. According to Zechariah, a time is coming, could already be here, when Jerusalem will become a cup that causes the nations to reel as though they are drunken. We are seeing the nations of the world drunk with hatred for the people of Israel. Jerusalem has become a heavy stone for many people in the world. Leaders are finding that not all their citizens agree as they assess the situation in the Middle East, specifically Israel and Gaza. To be on the side of Israel is becoming a heavy burden to a lot of people, it seems. Yes, even the Americans, their longtime friends. Zechariah's prophetic stinging words in chapter 12, verse 2 and 3 says, I am going to make Jerusalem a cup. This is God speaking. What's happening is God's doing. If you want to know the truth about it, Jerusalem, a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling like someone who is drunk. On that day, when all the nations, he said, of the earth are gathered against her, God says, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all nations are the Lord's words. Are those words, words we can visualize in our day? Notice again, let me remind you, God is doing this. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. And on that day, when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All who try to move it will injure themselves. It's like trying to move a great big rock. You're, you're going to do. You're going to hurt yourself if you aren't careful. And that seems like what's happening in our world today. It's interesting. Most of us don't know and realize this, but Moses was a prophet. He prophesied to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 4, 25 to 27. When you become the father of children, this is before he, you know, he was not able to lead the children of Israel into the land of promise. Joshua did. And children's children and have remained long in the land and act corruptly and make an idol in the form of anything. And do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord your God so as to provoke him to anger, to make him mad unrighteous acts, actions that are wrong and are not right. That's what he's talking about. Moses said, I called heaven and earth to witness against you that you will surely perish quickly from the land where you're going over Jordan to possess it. You'll not live long on it, but will be utterly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the people. Notice what he said. Why has Israel been scattered amongst the nation? So the Lord's doing this. And you will be left few in number, even a remnant among the nations where the Lord drives you. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 25. Now, I want you to notice this particularly. When you have remained long in the land, what's going to happen, Moses said? What's he prophesied? You're going to act corruptly. You're going to make an idol in some form or another. You're going to be like your neighbors. When you've done that which is evil, not right in the sight of God, but wrong. Here's what's going to happen. When you do this, Moses said, I'm telling you it's going to happen. I call heaven and earth to witness. You will not live long on it. You'll be utterly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the people and you will be few in number. That That's hard, isn't it? And But it is it something that was just, just for another time, another world, so to speak? Does it not have something to say to Israel today. Yes, Moses prophesied that Israel, what they should and would do in the latter days. I want you to notice that when they in their distress call upon the Lord with all their heart. But from there, 
you will seek the Lord, your God, and you will find him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul. When you're in distress, he says to the children of Israel, and all these things have come upon you, in the latter days, you will return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice. For the Lord your God is a compassionate God. He will not fail you nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant with your fathers, which he swore to them. Very wonderful words for the people of Israel to hear. But like many nations, like many people in the world today, we don't think about our history. We don't remember. Indeed, Moses said, ask now concerning the former days which were before you. I think that'd be a good advice to the children of Israel today. Since the day that God created man on earth and inquire from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything been done like this great thing? Or has anything been heard like it? Has any people heard the voice of God speaking from the midst of the fire as you have heard it and survived? Speaking to Israel. Has a God tried to go to take for himself a nation from within another nation by trial, signs and wonders, war mighty with a mighty hand and outstretched arm by great terrors as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt? Before your very eyes, to you it was shown that you might know that the Lord, he is God. There is no other besides him. I'm so glad to say that Israel has hung on to that great truth all these years. Out of the heavens, he will let you hear his voice to discipline you. And on earth, he will let you see his great fire and heard, and you heard his words from the midst of the fire. How blessed you are because he loved your fathers. Therefore, he chose their descendants after them. And he personally, Moses, said, brought you from Egypt by his great power, driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you to bring you in and to give you their land for an inheritance, inheritance just like it is today. So you, how can you make righteous history if you don't even remember your history. How can you? Kind of hard, isn't it? For I know the plans, God said to Jeremiah, that I have for you to Israel, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. I know those plans, and that's what I want to do. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I'll listen. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's exactly what Moses said back in the, I think it was the fourth chapter. That we just got through reading of Deuteronomy, repeating those same, that same path and the assurances. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's good advice for all of us, no matter what nation we are involved in, isn't it? Very good advice. So as we think more about this, the Lord will cause your enemies. And this is given to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7 through 13. The Lord shall cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before you. They'll come out against you one way and flee seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your barns and all that you put in your hand, put your hand to. He'll bless you in the land which the Lord gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, as he swore to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Not too long before Moses died, the servant of the Lord, and Joshua ordered to take over. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord, and they'll be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity, the offspring of your body, the offspring of your beast, Produce of, your, produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. And he swore by himself the promises that God made. The Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season, to bless all the work of your hand, and you shall lend to many nations. You won't have to borrow. The Lord will make you the head of the, and not the tail, and you only will be above and you will not be beneath what glorious promises were made 
Well, it's plain to see why Israel went from being the head of, to being the tail. <laughs> from being on top to being on the bottom. It's plain to see why God's people were temporarily driven from their homeland. Their own representatives said when they crucified the Savior that the Lord sent, God sent to them, let his blood be upon us. Which as we can see from Moses, Yahweh their God promised to them through Abraham and his seed. On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, three years almost to the day after I was born, the head of the Jewish agency proclaimed the establishment of the state of Israel. Our president at that time, Harry S. Truman, recognized the new nation on that very same day. The Jewish occupation of Jerusalem, however, did not occur until June 7, 1967. We remember the Six-Day War, don't we? Which noted the historic reunification of Jerusalem. Again today, we're seeing, by TV news, Jerusalem being compassed about with armies. It seems, perhaps, we should be on alert. Wouldn't you think the people of Israel on alert? are on alert today. The people in Palestine are on alert. I guess we need to be on alert too, don't we? we? Need to recognize what's going on. After regaining national status, is it not a good time to do as Moses said, when you're in distress and all these things have come upon you, in the latter days, you will return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice. For the Lord your God is a compassionate God. He'll not fail you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant with your fathers which he swore to them. It is the right time for the natural born sons of Abraham, the natural olive tree, as Paul called it in the in the new covenant, as well as those who are children of Abraham by faith in his seed, the promised seed, Jesus, us the wild olive tree, if you will. It is time for us all to reacquaint ourselves with the promises that God made to Abraham and his seed. And first of all, to repent, to renew our faith in those promises, the land promise, as well as the promised blessings that God promised to Abraham. It is a good time, my friend, all over the world, to return to Yahweh and his son, our Messiah. God bless you, is my prayer.